What's going on guys? So we have a bit of a predicament here. I have lost the key to my Abloy lock here from Fort Knox Locks and I need to remove this so I can loosen the two set screws and remove this sleeve so I can install a new one. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to go at it with a grinder. I think most people would say cut the hinge off and that should do it even though the folks over at Fort Knox say that this will still prevent this from opening up. So let's go at it with a grinder. Let's see what happens. Okay, so what I can tell you is, even though this has been on here for a while, and you can see the powder coating is pretty much coming off in most areas, it held really, really well, and it's still performing its task really, really well. Now, I cut both of these bottom welds out of the way because that's essentially the part of the hinge that is the easiest to cut through. I have three pieces up here versus two down here, and I wanted to see if I can remove this just by cutting this portion off. I think I can. It looks like I'll be able to open it enough to get it around that little plate that they put back there to prevent it from sliding off. But let's see what happens. That's problematic. I think I got it. You can see I got this slipped underneath it. Part of the problem is, is that I have this up here and I can't move the assembly up because that's there. Let's see, maybe if I remove that, I'll have access to it. This will probably do it. Removing this should give me the ability to slide the lock off. Well, it's still binding right there. really sure that that would do it. If I can get the top part off, it might slide down from the bottom. There we go. Man, they designed that plate in there just about perfect to prevent that from happening.
and we got it off. Boy, that was a royal pain in the butt. That plate right there is what makes it so difficult to get off. And since that's bolted on, you really have to deal with that before you can do anything else. Yeah, this is a pretty dang good design. And again, anything like this is purely a deterrent. The reality is, is if somebody wants something like this bad enough, they'll spend the time, they'll make the noise, they'll do what they need to do, they'll bang stuff around until they get it off. But that plate right there is what was holding that piece on and kept keeping it from just sliding off over here. And consequently, even though I cut the hinge, it didn't help. I could have cut the other side of the hinge off, but the lock itself was acting as kind of a clamp as well. But that's kind of crazy. But just wanted to show you how difficult these locks are to defeat. Now, overall time, maybe five minutes if I'd known exactly what to go for, how to get to it, and what to cut. But that's still a lot of noise and effort to get that thing off. Anyways, just wanted to show you that simply because I know a lot of people wonder how difficult it is to get something like that off. Uh, the rust on the lock really didn't impact it too much, to be honest with you. It's really cutting it in the right way, removing some parts, getting it off of there uh, the best way you probably can using the tools you have. And not a lot of people carry a grinder around, but if they do, you can remove it. It's just going to take some effort and it's going to make some noise. Probably more effort and noise than most people are willing to put up with if, they're, uh, if they know that somebody could hear or see what they're doing. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to be replacing this really soon, but since I came out here and I noticed that I couldn't remove the lock, I was like, you know what, let's just remove it the way that we can remove it with the tools we have and see how effective it is. I was able to get it off. It did require taking this piece off, uh, cutting the hinge, and then trying to bend it so I could actually work it off around the, uh, the plate that was here to prevent that from sliding off over the bolt. So very, very cool. We will do another video installing the new coupler that we're going to be putting in the Texas Pride Tilt Deck Trailer. This is one beast of a trailer. Definitely want to make sure I have good equipment in here. And the upgrade we'll be putting in here is something that I've already featured on the channel, but we have yet to install. I'll tell you one thing that's cool with the technology on these new trucks is the fact that it lets you know when your tailgate's down. That's actually a really big one. Previous models didn't, and if for some reason the deploy feature that dropped your tailgate accidentally dropped your tailgate, you wouldn't know and you could do damage to whatever you're towing or stuff would just fall out. And the fact that the tailgate camera, so this is the camera that's on the actual end of the tailgate when it's down, does let you know if you're getting too close to something. So I'm looking at my gooseneck right here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera right there. And I just can't see where it is over the ball. One of the challenges with these extremely long crew cab trucks and how high they sit, plus the fact that you don't really have a camera that looks directly down into the bed whenever you have a toolbox, is that they don't really help you that much whenever you're backing up. Let me give you a, an example here. So from that picture, you really can't see where the ball is. You can just kind of barely see the top of it just a little bit, but you really don't get a good perspective of where the ball is. And that can be a little challenging. So what I use in this instance with this is I can actually look off the back here. I can see at least that I'm getting close. The parking sensors on the actual tailgate are gonna give me some visibility there as well and I can get out and see how close I am over the ball and if I'm lined up. Okay, pretty much lined up. Get all that straightened away. Let's see if we can drop it on. the landing gear off the ground we'll leave that open for now we're just moving the trailer right now okay so we have the trailer moved need to clean it up a little bit gonna be honest with you uh, this trailer needs some TLC it's gotten quite a bit of use quite a bit of a uh, of sand abuse and quite frankly I need to show this thing some love because this has been a darn good trailer very very strong trailer it's been able to move around anything I need to move around and it is always performing very well, besides the fact that we had to swap out the pump, put a new one in, because the other one uh, was actually sitting in some water and it developed a little bit of a, an issue and it seized up. 
Anyways, really glad that we were able to get the lock off the front so I can do the next project, which is gonna be to swap out the, the new coupler up front. This is a really cool trailer. Just gonna do some TLC, like I said, clean it up, get it looking really nice, and we'll continue from there. Anyways, guys, sure hope you enjoyed this video. Interesting video, removing a lock, right? Had to remove it. A lot of people probably run into this scenario where they lose a key and they need to figure out how to get into something that they've locked. This is my way of having to deal with that. Anyways, guys, sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very, very soon.